It was June 24th, 2022, when the FBI agents showed up and just started carrying artwork out of Orlando Museum of Art. That's Matthew Palm, arts writer for the Orlando Sentinel, talking about the dramatic exit of the Jean-Michel Basquiat Heroes and Monsters exhibit that was at the Orlando Museum of Art in 2022. The work said to be by one of the most sought after artists, Basquiat, who died in 1988, were taken by the FBI during an investigation to determine whether they were fakes. Works by Basquiat routinely sell for millions of dollars, making this collection a treasure trove, if it was authentic. This controversy surrounding the works has since derailed the museum's leadership, its reputation, and now has resulted in a lawsuit with the museum seeking damages from the ex-museum director Aaron DeGroff and owners of the artworks that are now considered to be fakes. Here's a look back on how the scandal unfolded starting from the hiring of DeGroff as the director and CEO of the Orlando Art Museum. With a PhD in art history, DeGroff had a keen interest in finding old works of art and authenticating them, especially undiscovered works. DeGroff was hired in January of 2021 after spending 14 years at the Muscarelli Museum of Art at the College of William & Mary in Williamsburg, Virginia. According to the lawsuit, within months of arriving, Aaron DeGroff was already speaking with Pierce O'Donnell, a high-profile Los Angeles attorney, about some art he owned, the Basquiat art that would later be in the Heroes and Monsters exhibition. Plans to exhibit the 25 paintings that were attributed to Basquiat was off and running. And according to an April 16th email, the lawsuit quotes, DeGroff was already telling other people on staff that the museum would be showing this art, even though he had never seen it himself. However, by the summer, questions began to circulate. In the summer of 2021, the associate curator started to ask questions about the art based on some articles she had seen casting doubts on its authenticity. Because the story of how this art by one of the world's most sought after artists was discovered is fantastical to say the least. It was said Basquiat painted the works in 1982 while temporarily living and working in gallerist Larry Gagosian's home in California. It was said he sold the works to Emmy winning TV writer Thaddeus Mumford for $5,000. Mumford notably known for his work on the television show MASH. He put the artwork in a storage locker but then stopped making payments on it. Eventually it was auctioned off. From there, the artwork made its way into the hands of a group of collectors, including Pierce O'Donnell. Because the Basquiat Authentication Committee had disbanded, there was no definitive answer to the work's authenticity. But the authors did find several experts who vouched for the work. By the time the art reached Orlando, however, some of them were dead, and one of them wanted her name no longer associated with the exhibit. Along with the art came this mysterious poem that was said to cement the bond between Basquiat and the screenwriter. As many questions were left unanswered, on July 19, 2021, the museum was contacted by the FBI, informing them of an investigation into the work's authenticity. We would later find out that Cynthia Brumbach, the chairwoman of the board, and Aaron DeGroft kept this information to themselves. Although Aaron DeGroft was quick to inform Pierce O'Donnell, according to the museum's lawsuit, even though the FBI had specifically told him not to. In the FBI's investigation, which included subpoenas on the museum, they were interested in seeing DeGroff's phone. But he claimed that his phone had suffered a catastrophic event and that the data had been destroyed. Still, the museum pushed forward with plans for the exhibit, and in October of 2021, the works came to Orlando to be prepped for the exhibition. At this time, the works were physically able to be examined, and FedEx labels on the works cast even more doubt. Basquiat, who died in 1988, often worked on discarded cardboard shipping boxes. One label, from FedEx, raised questions about whether that logo and typeface had even been invented when Basquiat was alive. Museum staff also noticed a label addressed to Michael Barsman, the LA auctioneer who was involved in the discovery of the art and his name will come up again. Even with the holes in the backstory on the works and an FBI investigation looming, the exhibit still was on. It opened on February 12, 2022, and from an outsider's perspective, to a great success. But after national media reports, the museum was starting to feel the heat. In an effort to move away from the negative attention coming nationally and locally, the museum's board was forced to make some decisions. And in April 2022, the museum decided to pull the plug early and send the works off to Italy nearly a year sooner than expected. But before the works could leave the country, the FBI was in the museum and literally taking the art off the walls. This dramatic exit of the art was due to the FBI investigating into possible conspiracy and wire fraud from attempts to sell the paintings that were considered fakes, a federal crime if that was the case. From there, the ripples quickly sent shockwaves through the museum's leadership. Within days, the museum had fired Aaron DeGroft, officially for the unprofessional emails he had sent. 
Of those emails, one has been widely scrutinized where DeGroff told a University of Maryland professor, Jordana Morsejase, shut up, stop being holier than thou and stay in your limited lane, after she voiced concern that a report she created for the artwork's owners was being used out of context and was not to be used to authenticate the works that were being put on display in Orlando. The museum moved quickly to do damage control, hiring a local philanthropist as an interim leader, but by the end of August, that philanthropist had left the organization, saying he was unsatisfied with the work there. Several board members critical of the proceedings also left the board because of term limits that had suddenly started to be enforced. As time passed, more of the top leaders departed the organization. The chairwoman of the board left in December, and the chief curator, after 42 years, quietly resigned in the spring. For the most part, the museum was trying to get back on track and staying relatively quiet about the controversy, even after claiming there would be transparency about what happened. In September, the new board chair, lawyer Mark Elliott, apologized for the museum scandal. Elliott said an internal investigation would lead to more information about the scandal and promised to share it with the public. That information never really got out. But in January 2023, more bad news came for the museum. The American Alliance of Museums put OMA on probation after 50 plus years as a member in good standing. And in April of this year, more headlines didn't help the museum's cause. The scandal came back into the national spotlight as Michael Barsman, a Los Angeles auctioneer, told the FBI he had helped fake some of the art that was shown at the museum. Barsman was the name found on a suspicious FedEx label adhered to the back of a painting. His confession helped him avoid jail time. Later, Aaron DeGroft would say that Barsman was lying to the FBI and it was all part of a bigger cover-up. Which brings us to the current civil lawsuit filed by the museum in August. However it appears, closure will not come easy. In its civil suit, the museum has sued both Aaron DeGroft and the owners of the paintings for damages they say they've incurred because of the embarrassment and the costs associated with the failed exhibition. Among the owners, of course, is Pierce O'Donnell, that California attorney who knows his way around a lawsuit. And he and DeGroft have already vowed that they will fight this lawsuit with everything they have.